right? Okay. All right, let's talk about this concept. You're going to see this a ton today from the LA Rams, a ton. Again, I got to, I got to make a strong assumption. This is in everybody's playbook. Um, I'm going to show you some ways that we run it. We read it. And again, how we married up to that hitch count. I'm a big believer in this. Okay. Let's go back to this concept. You're going to see the Rams today running a ton of that jet motion stuff. And the Rams will use this space, spacing concept uh, with the jet motion guy as the final number three, right? So he becomes kind of that flat player, okay? Uh, let me go back to this now, and I'll show you this clip. We, we move this into the read category of man zone, okay? Hey, if it's man, you're going to work one side. If it's zone, you're going to work the other side, okay? Typically for us, you know, as you look at the structure of a defense, the overhang defender a lot of times is one of your greatest man indicators. And certainly the quarterback should be, should be hunting eyes, right? He's looking for eyes of the defenders, uh, defenders that are looking specifically at offensive players, obviously are giving you man indicators. But as you look at this, okay, how we, how we marry this up, uh, the number two guy will have what we call the OTB route. For us, that's at six yards. I'm going to tell you why, okay? The outside guy, the number one guy, He's going to have what's called a spacing route. He's going to be at eight yards. Okay. And we're going to tell him to get to what we call the 50 50 line between the top of the numbers and the hash. And then the back, you can free release him. You can check release him. There's a lot of different ways to do it. In this particular play, we're going to check uh, release the back on the swing. Okay. Real simple. Okay. Uh, for the quarterback in a zone situation. Okay. And he can manipulate his drop a little bit because you, you typically got some big bodies over the middle, but we're going to try to throw that OTB route on rhythm, right? No hitch one, two, three, throw. Okay. There is not a movement key associated with this. Okay. There's not a lot of post snap confirmation associated with this. If this guy's open, stick it on his belly button and go on to the next play. If he's jammed up coming across the middle, interior players are clobbering them up you now take one hitch and throw the spacing route okay uh spacing routes jammed up he's getting held he's getting grabbed whatever the case may be we'll take a second hitch and we'll throw it to that back on the swing what i tell the quarterbacks is that you can manipulate this rhythm drop because you'd like to give these guys on the spacing route the opportunity to work a little bit i tell the quarterbacks guys you can always throw that swing out there a little bit late and if he gets bumped out of bounds for two yards, it is what it is, okay? Now, to the man side. How I had this drawn up initially uh, was with just with double slants, right? Just classic, good old school man answer. We read that inside out with quick game footwork. We call it punch and settle, so there's no drop. And I'm going to show you that here. Uh, this particular play, we put this, uh, this big box read on here, right? The inside fade, okay, against man covers that he would go to if it's man, okay? So we'll talk about the spacing concept here. Uh, quarterback reads zone. You can see the defense here get it, just giving us a classic uh, three deep, three under uh, fire zone here. Again, it doesn't matter if it's blitz. doesn't matter if it's cover four, cover six, cover two, cover three. It's zone, period. One, two, three, rhythm. There he's on rhythm right now. You can see that the OTB route doesn't really get to where he needs to get to over the ball take one hitch and bang the spacing route. We had manipulated this formation a little bit to put the tight ends outside. We lost the back and the protection there. They brought six, it looks like. And, uh, and we got a good completion there. Really, really good fire zone answer here. Excuse me, five man pressure here, three deep, three under, got him, okay. Again, uh, I'm a big believer in this conceptually for the quarterback. You just can't have a million concepts. It's hard to get good at everything. So how can you keep your concepts limited to things that you know how to teach as a coach um, that he understands how to read as a quarterback? Again, going back to read categories, dividing the field, movement keys, man answers. These are things that should be discussed in every concept. And then you as the coach can start to dress these things up, right? This is a play right out of the LA Rams playbook from today. They'll get to it a few different ways. Um, you can see the receiver up top. Uh, in this particular game, we had him on a post, but you can do a lot of different stuff with that guy as a potential uh, man answer. The other thing that I would tell you this, and we've done this with quarterbacks, 
is because you're getting into this little bunch here, the defense no longer can really play true man-to-man -man coverage, right? They, they should now be in some sort of IO type situation. And, and a lot of times on bunch concepts, bunch spacing, I tell the quarterback, hey, Q, read categories off, just stay to the spacing side. Just live with it over here, right? Let's watch him here. One, two, three. You can see the tight end maybe could have banged it to him. A little tight in there. Take one more hitch, spacing route. Boom. Good distribution right there. And then you can see the flat guy kind of leak out there to create the stretch. Uh, one of the great coaching points here, I think, on spacing for that number three route, if it is indeed a flat, uh, is width before depth, right? You're not necessarily concerned about this guy getting to five yards. That might be in the playbook, right? But we want to uh, we want to create a little bit of width uh, for those two interior routes. And good job there on third down, and, and we'll move the sticks. Okay, again, timing, right? Rhythm, one, two. Be really hard. We're really hard on the quarterbacks here at U Albany about the, that, the, those hitch counts and that footwork early on. Uh, if those hitch counts aren't marrying up to your offense, you got to look at the hitch counts. You got to look at the depths of the route, right? Man, maybe this route's a little bit too deep. He's, he's having a hard time getting there on one hitch, okay? Uh, you can see here now, we're going to move the back late. Again, for us, spacing's a three-man concept. Got to have three dudes to run it. Someone's got to be OTB. Someone's got to be on that spacing route. Uh, and then someone's got to be the flat stretch on a swing, a jet sweep, something like that. Uh, but again, you can see it here, OTB, spacing, swing. This happened to be the double slant game, okay? And the quarterback sees man-to-man -man coverage, what we call this low hole, non-blitz man. It's still man to him, doesn't matter. Read it inside out. You can see how his footwork has changed now. Love this footwork. Love it. That's called punch and settle. On that punch step right there, the beautiful thing, and I'm a big believer in all this, guys, that punch step that you see him taking, let me go to the other angle, okay? That's the same step that he takes on drop back pass, right? So right here, that punch step, if a defensive back is going to read, and I've heard a lot of defensive back uh, coaches talk about QB intentions, right? If he's going to read a rocker step or the catch and fire, boy, he's got a great shot to break on that football. Because our first step looks the same in quick game and drop back pass, Again, the hope as an offensive coach is that it forces the defensive back to respect something vertically and he cannot jump stuff, right? If I'm nitpicking this cue and he's okay, when he's using quick game footwork on this punch step, I'd like his eyes neutral. I'd like his eyes looking right down the barrel of the gun before he works the inside out slant uh, for two reasons. One, to obviously keep DBs pedaling. And, and two, you can see this big old defensive end on the right here. I don't want that guy getting his hands up, right? I don't want that guy reading quick game and I got a wide open slant and this guy knocks it in my face. And I'm like, man, that would have been a great play, right? These are the little details, right? That you're looking for to create high level quarterback play. These are the details that go from year to year and program to program, right? Uh, the mark of development of great quarterbacks over time. It doesn't matter if we're playing uh, uh, Stony Brook or Delaware or Alabama. These are things that should be ingrained with the quarterback. Uh, last spacing one here, I'll show you again, getting to the bunch. You could see here the quarterback, what I, he's late, right? He's taking a hitch to throw that OTB. I grind him on it. Say, you're late. That's really, really, that's a really short route to take big three and a hitch on. You're going to be late. We get the completion. We get the first down. Uh, great coaching point there for the Q. Trying to show you kind of the good, bad, and the ugly here. Um, last one here, the spacing, just from a little tight end wing set, just showing you different ways to get to it. Again, it's all man zone. There goes that spacing route. Again, you got two big tight ends in there and, uh, and the quarterback gets a completion, okay? Again, read category, man zone. However you're teaching him to decipher that, coach, how do I know if it's man or zone, okay? Those are the type of things. What players am I looking at here, coach, to figure it out? Those are the things that you really have to challenge yourself with as a coach.